if you are concerned about your children smoking cannabis, your concern needs to be more about what happens to your children if they get a felony for smoking cannabis. My name is Wanda James, and together with my husband, Scott Dura, we were the first African Americans licensed to own a dispensary and an edible company in Colorado in 2009. When my father passed away, I had the opportunity to meet my brother, and um, when I met my brother, he had just come out of the prison system. When we think about somebody being in prison, especially for a felony, you would figure that they've done something really horrible, that they've hurt people or murdered somebody or did something really bad. And when he told me that he was arrested for four and a half ounces of cannabis, um, I was shocked because I went to the University of Colorado and four and a half ounces of cannabis was what we had every weekend. Nobody cared about it. CUPD would walk past and see us rolling joints on the steps of, you know, Libby Hall, our, our dorm, and they would say, hey, kids, you know, put that away. We'd put it away, cops would leave, and we'd pull it all back out and start rolling again. I believe his entire sentence was 10 years. Of those 10 years, four and a half were actually spent incarcerated. During that four and a half years of incarceration, um, my brother picked cotton, picked cotton in Texas <laughs> to buy his freedom. It's even hard to say that, that my black brother was sentenced because of pot to pick cotton. It's a tragedy. It's an American tragedy. Myself and my brother were a perfect example of depending on what zip code you happen to live in in America, depending on whether you became a cannabis entrepreneur or a felon. I'm a former military officer, a former corporate executive, a former political consultant. What was important for us um, after uh, Barack Obama's election was to be able to put a different voice and a different face on the idea of what was happening with social justice surrounding cannabis. Approximately 85% of the people who were arrested uh, for cannabis uh, during that time were uh, black and brown between the ages of 17 and 24. We wanted to make a difference and we wanted to stand up. We knew that they couldn't make criminals out of us and uh, we opened our first dispensary. For me as a chef, you know, the thing is, is that once I learned how to cook with cannabis, I enhanced the flavor. So my biggest joy out of it really was knowing now that I have another herb that I can cook with. I get probably as much joy as helping someone get to the next day or get through the day than the gathering with the friends and we're celebrating. Cannabis is a thousand times better yes. than anybody dealing with alcohol or the fog of, you know, people that deal with anxiety, mm -hmm. with prescription drugs. So it's amazing to me when you start to look at cannabis and the hypocrisy that we see surrounding this plant. I smoke a joint every day. And people say, well, you know, oh my goodness, you know, how do you run a business? How does this happen? How do you, you know, do what you do? If Scott and I were Ernest and Julio Gallo, there is not one person that would ever think it was strange that we had a glass of wine together every <laughs> night. Of course, beer, you know, mostly. <laughs> you know? It's, it's, it's... So we want to normalize this and remove the hypocrisy because we're yeah. kind of Ernest and Julio Gallo of the and cannabis it. industry. What's important now is the idea that we find more cannabis entrepreneurs of color. So that's our next big step. Stop being arrested for it, now learn to be entrepreneurs from it.